our next guest is someone I'm so excited to meet and talk about. Lauren has the coolest friends and got John to come on and talk with us today. So grateful to you, John, for coming on to uh, meet with us and talk with us about leadership, culture, and strategy and trust today. So um, for all of our viewers out there, let me give you a little bit of an introduction to John O'Grady. He helps athletes, coaches, and executives bring out the very best in their players, teams, and organizations. Um, John is a former Division I athlete, West Point grad, Army colonel, and distinguished combat leader. He inspires leaders and teams to become the best versions of themselves in really demanding and complex environments. So he's been doing this for 30 years, worked with diverse groups of organizations, and he now provides leadership, culture, and strategy principles that are really fundamental to excellence. So today we're talking about trust and what John calls the national trust deficit. Uh, John, I know that was quite a mouthful of an introduction, but thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. Great to be here with uh, both of you and, and your, and your uh, audience. So thank you. Absolutely. So I'm like, ever since I read your bio and what we were going to talk about today, I was, I've just had this burning question of what is the trust deficit in the United States? I, mean, I think we all have kind of an idea, but what's, what is your description? Yeah, so um, it, it really, the idea really came uh, from a, uh, I believe it was a David Letterman uh, show, and he actually had the chief of, uh, or the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who's the you know, senior military advisor to the president on, and he asked him, hey, what's the, what's the greatest deficit to our nation in terms of security right now? And uh, the chairman at the time gave a, an, an answer that cre created a lot of buzz and stir. And he said it was the national deficit, uh, meaning the monetary fiscal deficit, mm -hmm. right? Um, for a whole host of reasons, he went on to explain his logic and it was well-founded. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I actually would push back on that. And maybe that was true when he said it in, in that context. But I really believe the greatest threat, not only to our national security at the highest level, right? but all the way down into our communities and even into our homes on some level is this trust deficit that exists. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, Thoreau basically said, truth is essential to building trust, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Robert Burns, so O'Grady, so I gotta have some Celtic Scottish, you know, quotes in here as well, of course, said suspicion is heavy armor and with its weight, it impedes more than it protects. Mm -hmm. And the first responsibility of leaders is to build trust. And so, you know, I take those two quotes and I, I put it in the context of um, a, a little bit of a variant of the chairman uh, when he was talking to David Letterman and now I'm talking to you all and who knows, maybe we'll get the same buzz, uh, but it is the national trust deficit. That's the one that, that, that is really, I believe, the root of all our challenges and problems, again, from the national down to community level. Well, that was my biggest question when I read John's articles about the building a culture of trust. And, and John, even though you were referring it to a corporate environment, the truth is it, it blew right out of me to say, wait a minute, we need this everywhere now. Like we really need to figure out how to trust again on a national level. I mean, neighbor to neighbor, friend mm -hmm. to former friend, relatives. I mean, everyone at this point is questioning everything. And without trust, how do we get past all that? And since this is your, this is your conversation, so um, what are the what are the benefits of trust? Like, why, why is it so important? Yeah, so, I mean, there's a host of them. Um, you know, I'll, I'll start with the whole, again, notion of, um, you know, when we we'll go back to that Robert Burns quote, right, where he talked about suspicion getting, getting sown, and, and especially so in today's world where digital age, we're all connected. So good um, can, can spread but malfeasance can spread just as quickly, right? Probably faster. And faster, right. And, and that, that breeds this anger and mistrust until, until a point where, like you said, Lauren, we're, we're so polarized and then we become paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And so how do we get out of this is what I'm trying to, you know, create a conversation and, and a dialogue, quite frankly, 
so that we can get to the better space that you talked about. You know, if you just look at from a statistical standpoint, um, Harvard, Harvard Business Review did, did a study. Google did a longitudinal study as well on this. And I'm just going to read off a few um, quotes or, or statistics in terms of compared with people in low trust organizations, or you could, you could read that also relationships, mm-hmm. right? Like you were talking about inside our homes and, and, and personal relationships. Compare them with people in high trust companies or organizations or relationships. And you have 106% more energy, mm-hmm. 70% more, uh, more employee engagement, uh, 74% less stress, 50% higher productivity, 40% less burnout, 13% fewer sick days, and it goes on and on and on, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, if you're, if you're a business executive out there, I, I can't imagine any business executive who wouldn't say, wow, I'd like to, I'd like to get after some of those numbers. Mm-hmm. Because they very quickly can translate every one of those percentages to a monetary figure, yeah. okay? Now, if the monetary figure isn't strong enough motivator for you, it really comes down to the sense of, of psychological safety. Hmm. Because one of the fundamental byproducts of a culture of trust is when you are is beginning to feel psychologically safe. And that means you feel genuinely like you belong within your authentic self. You can then start to contribute in, in a meaningful way because you, again, you feel safe to do that and learn in a meaningful way because you feel safe to do that as well and, and, and show some vulnerabilities maybe in what you don't know, right? Um, and then you are actually able to uh, push back on the status quo in a respectful manner. Now, True. again, that translates to innovation and growth, right? And so those are just some of the few benefits of trust. So, John, what, what are the... the- I, I think we should know this, but honestly, if you asked me what are the challenges to developing a culture of trust, I, I couldn't tell you exactly, except what we've been experiencing over the last few years. Um, but from your perspective, what are the challenges and then what solutions can you offer? Sure. So uh, great question. You know, so the first, the first thing it, it, it ever solving a problem is, is properly identifying the problem, right? you know, versus coming up with a solution for a problem that never existed. And so uh, very quickly, there's a couple that I, that I, I talked about. Um, the first one is, is, is really think about it. When do we speak trust? When do we have legitimate conversations about trust? Well, we do it on something like this where, hey, you know, we're going to premiere this topic. Um, we maybe do it in a classroom, maybe in a corporate setting where we're doing an offsite and we're going to talk about values. Um, and, and everybody, you know, shakes their head, oh, yeah, 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 trust. And then when's the next time we talk about it, though, in a, in a meaningful way? Either when it's just about to be broken or it has been broken. And now you're in an emotionally charged situation, which is never a good time to talk about it. That's and so true so, because you're not feeling any. Right. And so now we start to become conditioned to almost avoid the discussion of trust altogether. And, exactly. So there, there's, there's challenge number one. Um, the other one is really being able to just, you know, I, I do these sessions in various settings and, you know, I'll, I'll tell people get in small groups very quickly, take one minute. And, and even if you're listeners right now, I tell them, get, get a piece of paper and get ready to write it down. Write down in four sentences or less your definition of trust that you would be comfortable to share with your corporate members, your coworkers, people you lead, you know, and, or your loved ones. Go ahead and do that. And most people are exceedingly challenged to write that down. It's a feeling, right? But to to write it down into like a clear written definition is challenging. So right there, that's another challenge, right? How do we even get after something if we don't have a common understanding and can't articulate with one another what it is? So that's the second challenge. The the other, there's three more. Um, This notion of whether trust is given or earned Right. So I, for the longest time, I was like, hey, you've got to earn my trust. I was that guy. I was in that category. Over time and really looking at this and putting it into practice and thinking about it, uh, I have evolved to um, the, the relationship starts with trust being given. And I, I could talk to that at great length, but 
that's a tough one to get around. And even today, I find myself struggling with it a little bit, right? There, there's some tension there. I get that. Yeah, um, you're a trust but verify kind of person like me. <laughs> uh, um, well, it's funny because the, the trust framework and, and the trust equation actually starts to get it at that verification a little bit, uh, uh, which is really the next big step. Uh, the last one that I'll talk to just briefly is, you know, we, we kind of have a, a, an idea. And again, I was this guy. I either trust you or I don't. Mm. Right? You know, so if you're, you're listeners out there, do you ever say that to yourself? You know, and there's probably some wife or husband looking at each other right now going, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's not binary. Mm -hmm. Understanding and recognizing and getting your head around the fact that trust is, is on a, a continuum, a spectrum. Um, is, is another challenge that you've got to get over to, to understand that and, and be able to appreciate that and be willing to explore that. So those are the fundamental challenges. Um, the last one that goes into when I break out the trust equation, which is how to overcome a lot of these challenges, is the notion about um, the difference between expectations and demonstrated behavior mm. and, and the disconnect between those two. Now, that's a really interesting one, too, because as a manager um, at, at my full-time job, it's hard to know, this conversation is so resonating with me because I trust certain people to do certain things. And I trust some people to do really great tasks, but I don't really trust them to have my best interests. They kind of have their own best interests. And I try to, I, I trust them until they kind of blow it. And then it's a little bit hard to get back but there's still a path there, but then how do you, it's just, it's very complicated, multifaceted, just like you said, but at the same time, how do I be a trustworthy leader as well? And someone that they feel that they can trust and get behind. It's, it's really like this whole conversation is just so enlightening to me. Yeah. And you bring up a great point about, um, you know, the fact, and especially I love that you think about that as a leader too, in terms of you have to be trustworthy right mm -hmm. so it's not just about you know you being able to trust the people who work for you but you have to be trustworthy in return and and that's really understanding the, the flow in which trust mm -hmm. is continually moving and being evaluated right mm -hmm. you know we, i mean and, and that's the point you know people sometimes are like well i don't know if i really want to start entering into these conversations but, okay um that's fine but i'm here to tell you deeply woven in our DNA, and you don't have to trust John O'Reilly, go, go, go read some uh, neuroscientist work on this, okay? But deeply woven into our DNA as human beings is, is this constant I mean, and, and look, you, know, you all are doing it with me right now. Your listeners are doing it with me right now. I, quite frankly, am doing it back to you all without just as easily as, and subconsciously as I'm breathing. Mm -hmm. where it's a continual assessment of, can I trust this person? Is this person trustworthy? Can mm -hmm. I? And, and it goes again back to, it's why we connect trust to just being a feeling and we never really unpack it and get to a point where we can talk about it. Well, that, that assessment is really pretty mind blowing because and it, it takes like corporate trust building exercises and it just it lays it out for what it is, which is like HR decided they needed to do something. <laughs> But the truth, but because it's not restricted, I mean, you can start to have the conversation at home. Right. You know, I, I'm thinking about how conscious we always are about demonstrating, right? So showing up, you, know, you and I, Amy, right? We we show up, we invite guests on the show, we show up on time, we we do our best, we we produce hopefully a great show, right? <laughs> Our viewers get to benefit. I mean, on, you were saying, John, it, it, it's it built into the fabric of everything we do. And if we started to evaluate it from our own perspectives, showing up on time, doing what you say you're going to do. I, I remember when I was the in-house image expert at Chase Manhattan Bank, um, I was invited to speak at every internal gathering that was available, that was an educational gathering. Um, and, and the leaders of these gatherings would say, we are so grateful to you for being where you said, for doing what you said you would do. I said, what does that mean? Well, mm -hmm. you show up, you show up on time, you give a great talk, you're prepared. 
I said, well, wait a minute. <laughs> doesn't who, who doesn't do that? <laughs> and they say, no, didn't you know? That's why you're invited everywhere is because not everybody does that. Right. And right. it never dawned on me. So it really starts from the smallest nuggets of behavior for each of us. What a great comment, Lauren. I love, love that perspective. I was shocked when I heard that. It, 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 that is also perspective because you just started hitting on the trust equation, which is the fundamental uh, bedrock of this trust framework that I've, that I've begun to, to articulate uh, to you all um, in terms of like you show up on time, you do what you say you're going to do, you, you're prepared, you communicate clearly, right? And so I'm happy to unpack that for you all and your listeners as, as time permits, um, because that 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 is how you start to get after the challenges. So even so, John, have- I really think yeah. that at this point in, in our time, people are going to be so interested to be able to do their analysis. I mean, especially at this time of year when we're reflecting on all that's gone on and looking toward the new year and how do we, how do, we do better? How do we be better? How do we actually be our best selves in challenging times? That's where I see this really impacting all of us. So where can they get more information? How can they find you? Sure. Uh, go to my website. Uh, so it's OG leadership, all one word, OG leadership.com. Uh, you can see just a little bit of, uh, you know, what I do, who I work with, who I've worked with. Um, and, um, you know, that, that's where you can contact me, uh, or, you know, and then you can, you know, look me up on the social media links that are there as well. Uh, you the easiest way to contact me. That is so awesome. And, and as we go out, I just want to say thank you, first of all, for really helping me reframe this whole idea of trust. And second of all, can you give us a nugget as we go out of something that we can do today to start improve, becoming more trustworthy and um, improving our trust relationships? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it would be understanding that it doesn't take a large event. It doesn't take a large action, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of times in in the space of leadership in general, or even with trust, it's really just stacking a bunch of little micro things on top of each other, one after another, and and just trusting in the power of time. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we want things to be microwaved all the time. Just just do the little things like Lauren was saying, like you were saying, um, and then start the conversation in your home, in your community, uh, wherever you feel comfortable to do so, because again, there's no doubt in my mind, it, it, it you know, the lack of trust in this country, uh, in our communities, in our personal relationships is the number one security. I put it military guy, right? I put it in the security risk to our nation mm-hmm. and, and our individual well being. John, thank you so much for sharing with us. I appreciate you coming in. I know Amy does too. And I know I can see Amy in her eyes. She's got like a thousand more questions. I do. I am. I have so like, I, it's kind of mind blowing. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, wow, I learned something new today is thank you so much for your time and for teaching. Thank you very much. Thank you for ladies for what you do. uh, Just making your own community and our world a little bit better. And thanks to all your listeners. Thank you. Thank you.